Hello, I'm Kirby from Wallasauce, and we're going to teach you a little bit about the basics of sewing, hosted by Mass Mocha for Virtual Free Day. Now, what is sewing? Sewing is the craft of attaching or fastening objects using stitches made with a needle and thread. It could be done by hand or by machine, but for the limited amount of time that we have today, we're going to talk about the basic understanding of a sewing machine. It looks a little intimidating, but I promise we'll talk about every part and what their function is. It's important to note that this is an older machine, so some things may vary between manufacturers and years and models. The first thing we'll be talking about today is the sewing cord slash foot pedal. Sarah informed me that I have spelled cord wrong, but we will not be discussing that today. First things first, you got the electrical plug, you know what to do with that, just go ahead and plug that into the wall. The sewing pedal is what operates the machine. Just like a car, if you go pedal to the metal, it's going to go fast. If you ease up, it's going to go slower. Last but not least, this machine plug just plugs right into the side. We'll have a closer look when we look at the hand wheel here. Here's an in-depth look of the side view. Um, since this is an older machine, this has an older motor that's exposed, so you can see that the plug just plugs right into the motor. The motor is what allows the machines to sew at such high speeds. The motor is belt driven. As you can see, the belt drives the wheel. The position of the motor is adjusted with the screw to adjust the tension of the belt. Uh, the bobbin wheel is to disengage the needle, so when you wind your bobbin, you don't have to sew at the same time. We'll be talking about the bobbin winder a little bit more depth uh, later on in the video. As I briefly mentioned before, the sewing wheel actually powers the whole machine. The belt that's attached to the motor drives the wheel when you step on the pedal. This is how you thread the machine. You go down into the tension disc, up and around, into the take-up lever, and into the needle. If you notice, there are two strands of thread at the base there. That's because there's a top thread and also the bobbin thread. The tension disc controls the amount of pressure applied to the thread for an even feed to the machine needle. The take-up lever is the unit that pulls the thread off the spool, feeding it to the needle. The needle moves up and down with the top thread to make the next stitch. The bobbin, which is threaded and placed inside the case, spins within. The hook then grabs the top stitch, creating a loop that then, in turn, creates a lock stitch when the lever pulls the needle out of the fabric. I will note for all those experts out there that this is a shuttle bobbin machine, so this animation isn't technically accurate. The presser foot is operated by a lifting shank in the back and is designed to hold the fabric flat while your machine is sewing. The pressure dial allows the amount of pressure you put onto the material you're sewing on. The feed dogs operate below the seam, and really their function is to feed the material from underneath. Certain materials don't sew well with feed dogs, so this has an adjuster to turn them off if you need to. You're just going to take the top thread and go around that silver disc. Instead of going down, you go around and you bring it to that piece on the top right right there. There are plenty of videos that show you how to wind a bobbin, so if you're stumped, just go ahead and look that up on YouTube. The needle position allows you to shift the needle left or right if you're sewing closely on one side, usually with a straight stitch. Adjusting the stitch width allows you to sew a zigzag stitch or a straight stitch. The stitch length adjuster allows you to make the length of your stitch shorter or longer. Lastly, we have the reverse area or button. It's always good to punch in about six stitches before or after your seams so that it locks into place. Here's the important stuff. Sorry about the glare. It's snowing pretty bad out right now. This is the important stuff, the things that you should take away from the things that we just went over in the little animation. Now this is how the bobbin works, and this is how the threading works, and the tension dial, and all that, so this is how we have it all set up, and we're just going to take a look at the machine. As you can see, this is the same machine. Here's your stitch length right here. Your reverse is up top as well. The thread spool sitting right on top, going down into the spiral, down into the tension disc, up into the take-up lever, down into the needle, 
and the bobbin is connected down there as well. The hand wheel, bobbin winder, feed dog adjuster, power cord, bobbin wheel, you can't really see, but tight enough, there it is right there. It just kind of unclutches the belt so that you can, un you can wind bobbins and you uh, don't have the needle going down, up and down, up and down. That was kind of a new thing for this time period. So, yeah, we're just gonna get sewing here. So, we have it on a zigzag stitch. I don't know if you can see that, but as it's operating, it goes left and right like that. The needle position is in the center and the stitch width is on the maximum zigzag width. Now if we go to the minimum zigzag width, it just starts sewing the straight stitch. Now if we go and adjust the stitch length, you can see that it goes from being very long to short to reverse. Going all the way to the top, This machine is automatic. This is set at the controls and hold it back. They developed fast but weren't used by the public, although she was made of solid cast iron. Portable machines for running repairs were the vogue. Sewing machines were first made in about 1790. In the 1930s, the first electric machines were introduced to this country from America. The sewing machines are girls' best friend. wasn't impressive enough to embroider a name, just move the material. 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 Just move the material. Just move the material. This one weighs about four ounces. To embroider a name, just the machine. In this way you can sew on a button in. Just move the material. This machine is automatic. This machine is automatic. If that wasn't impressive enough, this machine is automatic. This machine is automatic.